So if you had one guess regarding the question I get asked most frequently, what would it be? It's the title of the video. So without putting it off any longer, I'm making a video to show you how to wire and sleeve an LED Bolgan switch. Let's get started with the materials. Here's a helping hand station. Its three primary functions are to keep the hot soldering iron from melting anything, some helping hands to hold the workpiece, and a wet sponge to retin your soldering iron. Next, you'll want to use a super cheap soldering iron, or just a cheap soldering iron, like this one. You want some general purpose cutters, a wire stripper, and I love these automatic wire strippers, a Bic lighter, and optionally, but highly recommended, a heat gun. You can use the lighter to do all the heat gun's jobs, but the heat gun in combination with the lighter makes things fast, safe, and easy. For our consumables, we're going to want some Rosen coarse solder, and I like the Benzomatic brand. It's easy to find, it's cheap, and it works really well. You'll want electrical tape, white or black, depending on how dark or light you want your sleeving to be. Without using more expensive and hard to find tools, we're trying to get these donor wires for the ends. If you don't want to use donor wires, you can directly solder to your motherboard. However, not everybody will want to do that. You'll need some assorted heat shrink. And finally, the sleeving of your choice. This is MDPC Blue Magic, or Magic Blue. It's a, it's a blue color, it's bluish. We are going to wire two separate wires up to this LED Bolgan switch. One's going to be for the LED, and the other one is going to send the signal to tell the computer to turn on. Now it's easy to identify how to wire the LED up because it has a voltage plus sign and a voltage minus sign next to each terminal. What most people want to know are which of the three terminals are used to turn your computer on. The three terminals are C1, NO, and NC. NO stands for normally open. NC stands for normally closed. And the C1 or G and D stands for the ground. If you want your computer to turn on when you press the switch, then you want to use the NO and the C1 or the NO and the ground. If you stick around, I'll show you to wire and sleeve this button. But if that's all you need to know, you can turn it off now. I'm separating the two wires that make up my switch cable so I can strip them. And with an automatic stripper, this is a very simple task. Next, we're gonna need our heat shrink. We're gonna need four pieces total. I'm gonna cut two of these strips into four segments. Put the heat shrink over the ends of my cables and now we can do some soldering. Okay, let's wire up the LED switch first. I gotta take my very dirty soldering tip and using the wet sponge, I'm gonna drag it across the surface. If the soldering iron is hot, it's gonna create a nice shiny surface. This is called tinning the tip. When you're wiring stuff up, use best practice. Red is generally used for positive terminals and black is usually used for ground. If you're using the power LED header on the motherboard or the HDD LED header, you don't need to worry about polarity. It's gonna complete the circuit either way. But again, use best practice. Now the goal for soldering is not to heat up the solder, but actually to heat up the terminal and the wire. To do this, I'm gonna to touch the iron to the terminal, use a little bit of solder to help promote flow. And once it's hot, the solder should flow over my wire. All right, that's a perfect solder. I'm gonna do the other side now. Again, touching the tip of the soldering iron to the terminal, then tapping the solder to the tip, and it will flow into the wire and the terminal. Do not breathe these fumes in, they will make you sick. And polarity does not matter for a momentary switch, but I'm going to put the black wire on the C1, or G and D if it's marked as such on your switch. And right next to it is the NO for normally open. I'm gonna connect the red wire to that. I had to reposition them off camera. So I'm gonna tin my tip. I'm going to touch the tip to the terminal. I'm going to put this solder on the tip so it flows onto the terminal and the heat will make it flow right into my wire. I got a little bit too much solder on my terminal so I'm gonna put the iron on it and blow. I actually blew solder off which cooled instantly and rolled off the table. All right, now the bottom terminal. Touch the tip of the iron to the terminal, touch the solder to the terminal, and bingo. There are some other tips that you should know about soldering. It's best to hold the iron underneath your workpiece because heat flows upward, but for these small gauge wires, it doesn't really matter too much. Turn off your iron, which is very, very important. Then push the heat shrink over your terminals. Once the heat shrink is over your terminals, you can use the heat gun to shrink them in place. If you don't have a heat gun, you can use a lighter, but it takes more finesse because you can easily burn the insulation, the cables, and even the switch housing. 
Before we move on to the next step, we want to mark the ends of our cables. Find the LED cable and use a Sharpie to cross out the power switch logo on it. After we get done heat shrinking this, we won't be able to tell them apart, so it's important to do this now. I want to use this light blue sleeving. Now with this particular blue, I could get away with using black or white, but because I want to be brighter rather than darker, I'm going to use white electrical tape for this next step. Using white electrical tape is a must to get bright colors to pop. Think of it as a primer for your cables. There are better sleevers than me, so keep that in mind while I do this. I like to start on the edge of the electrical tape so I can wrap it around several times with ease. Just follow the contour of the wire out, trying to get it as flat as possible. Then I start wrapping it around the cable. Now if you're not getting a smooth wrap, it might be worth it to start over because you don't want your sleeving to look chunky when you're finished. Now it's time to start sleeving. Measure out your sleeve and cut just a tad more than you think that what you're going to use. Measure your second sleeve from the first one you cut so it's nice and even. Next, use the lighter, barely melt the end. You want to quickly pull back the plastic like this so that there's not a nasty plastic wart at the end poking through your heat shrink. This is the fun part. Getting to slinky the heat shrink over my cable. The next step is to grab the end, butt up against the connector, pinch it, and pull as hard as you can to get the cable nice and stretched. Loose sleeving looks worse than if you just didn't bother to sleeve it, in my opinion. So you wanna get the sleeving nice and tight. Now we take our perfectly cut heat shrink and we stick it over the end. And I place it right in the middle. I cut my heat shrink a little bit longer than some people recommend because I like to keep the pin connectors from popping out. These things are really cheaply made, so this gives a little bit extra strength. Then I use the heat gun to slightly shrink it, but I'm not going to do it all the way because I want to reposition it to get perfectly centered. Now I can adjust this one down a little bit and this one up a little bit. Now I have my two connector heads. Everything's heat shrunk really nicely. And as you can see, there's a slight tiny little gap between the connector head and the heat shrink. This is actually exactly what I want because with some heat, I can apply it right here and I can bend these down like so. I don't know if the customer wants it this way, but it depends on his application. Now we're going to pinch the sleeving again and push it all the way up so it's nice and tight against the back of my switch. And I'm gonna take my bigger heat shrink from my heat shrink kit, put it over the ends and cover this gray part and I'm going to heat shrink it. Now to do this properly, I need to heat shrink this slowly and keep positioning it so it comes out real nice. And I have my perfectly heat shrunk and sleeved cable. Well, there you have it folks. There's nothing to this at all. I'm going to provide a link in the description for all the tools and materials I use to wire up my Bulgan switch so you can go do your own. If this video helped you out, you can like and subscribe and of course purchase your modding supplies through my Amazon link in the description. That really helps me out. If you have any more suggestions for how-to videos, I'm happy to make them. Just send me an email. Thanks for watching guys. Happy modding.